Hi, I'm Miss Boom. Today we're going to look at differentiation by rule. So in the previous video we had to look at differentiation by first principles and we did a few examples. But let's see if there's a pattern and a faster way to do it. So let's have a look at f of x and its derivative. So if we use differentiation by first principle, we can see that when we differentiate x, we get 1. When we differentiate x squared, we get 2x. x cubed is 3x squared. x to the power 4 is 4x cubed. So I wonder, is there a pattern? So if you can see, the power of x always goes down by 1. See, 4 becomes 3, 3 becomes 2, 2 becomes 1, 1 becomes 0. And the number in front of it is the power of x. So x is 1, power of 1, so it's 1. Bring the 2 down, bring the 3 down, bring the 4 down. I call it bring it down because I'm bringing it from up here to down here. So there's a pattern there. So f of x and f dash x. If I have x to the end then following this pattern, how would I write it? So the power decreases by 1 and the number in front of it is the power. So n, x, n to the minus 1. What about if I already have a number in front of the um, variable? So it will become 6x, 3x squared becomes 6x, 5x cubed becomes 15x squared. So what is the pattern there? So let's have a look at this one. 2 times 3 is 6. So we are just multiplying the power. So we still bring it down. Then multiply the next door neighbor's numbers together. And then the power is still reducing by 1. Test that theory. 3 times, so bringing the 3 down. 3 times 5 is 15. And then 3 minus 1 is 2. So it's the same thing. So we just have an extra value. Let's call it A at the front. But it's the same type of pattern. What about if I had x to the 0? What would that become? Bringing the zero down would make it zero. So x to the zero gives me zero. So if I have five, that's the same thing as saying five times x to the zero would also give me zero. So any number that has uh, no variable would just become zero when you differentiate. What about if I had two parts to it, two terms, x squared minus three x? Well, it becomes two x minus three. So we can see that we can simply do this part separately, becomes 2x, and that part separately. So is that the same case for plus? Yes. So here we have 5 times 2 is 10, 5 minus 1 is 4, 7 times 2 is 14, and then 2 minus 1 is 1. There's no power there. I, can, I chopped it off, but there's nothing there that was chopped off. So if I have the two functions, I can differentiate them separately and then add them together. And same scenario for if I had this difference of two functions, I can find the derivative of them separately. So if you look at this, you're like, oh my gosh, so many patterns. But really, you just have to remember x to the n is x, n x to the n minus 1. Bring the number down, subtract 1 from the power. Bring the number down, subtract 1 from the power. Let's do some examples. Differentiate each of the following functions by rule. So here we have example 1. y equals x to the power 4 plus 3x. So for the left side, we're going to bring 4 down. So we have 4x. Then minus 1 from the power becomes cubed. And we write not f dash x, but dy dx. So 4x to the power 3. What about this side? 3x. So x to the power of 1, bring the 1 down. 1 times 3 is 3. And then subtract 1 from the power. So 1 minus 1 is 0. x to the 0 is 1. So we have 3. Let's do another example. So here we have, again, dy dx. So bring the 2 down. We have 2 times 3 is 6. 2 minus 1 is just 1. And then minus 2, bring the 1 down is minus 2. And then x to the power of 1 minus 1 is 0, so it's just minus 2. And any number becomes nothing, so we're done. So remember, x disappears and numbers completely disappear. An example, so here 5 times 2 is 10, 
take away one is four for the power. Now we have a fraction. So bring the two down, we have two times three is six over five. And then two take away one is just one. And then for the X, it just becomes the number, which is minus six. How do we get minus six? The one times minus six is minus six. One minus one is zero, X to the zero is one. So remember, whenever we have X, it becomes whatever the number in front of X is. But whenever we have a number by itself, it disappears completely because X there is already times to the power of zero. So when you multiply by zero, you get nothing. One more example. So here we have no values, no, sorry, no variable of X. So X here is to the power of zero, right? Because X zero is one. And then multiply everything by zero, you get nothing or zero. So dy dx is zero. What about this one over here? This time we have f of x, so instead of writing dy dx, we're going to write f dash x. Then bring the three down, we have three times five is 15. Take away one from the three, we have two. Bring the two down, we have minus three times two is minus six. Take away one from the two, we have one. And then again, remember the pattern for the x values, it's just minus four and that one disappears. What about when we have something like that? Well, we can't do that, but we, what we can do is expand first. So let's do that. 2x times 5x is 10x squared. 2x minus, uh, times minus one is minus 2x. And now we can differentiate. Notice that I haven't written f dash x because this is the same uh, equation. Now we write f dash x because we're differentiating. So 2 times 10 is 20, then take away 1 from the power is just x, and then the minus 2. So let's do some notation because we'll see it in different ways so we don't get confused. So if we have f of x, then the derivative is f dash x. If we have y plus x squared, we would write dy dx. Oops, x no, not d. But if we had, for example, x and t's, then it will be dx over dt. Now, sometimes you'll see that when a question is telling you to d dx f of x, it's essentially telling you to find the derivative. So these two are the same thing. So let me show you how we use the calculator to solve any of these. So let me show you how to do the first one. So how do, this, how do we get to make it look like that? So you type in the expression. So x to the power 4 plus 3x, and then you highlight go to interactive um, calculation and then diff press ok and it gives us the differentiated line so again interactive calculation diff let's do another example so example seven, for the curve of f of x equals two x to the power four plus three x, find the gradient of the line to the curve at the point one five. So we're looking for the gradient at one five. So the gradient of the tangent is the same as the gradient of the line at that point. So in other words, gradient at x equals one. We don't really care about the five. So how do we do that? We're going to write the minimal minimum amount of symbols so we can remember what to do so we're looking for f f dash when x is one so let's find f dash first so that is f of x so f dash or the derivative is bring the four down we have eight x to a power of minus one is three and then plus three so that is the derivative now we have to find the derivative when x is one so plug one in so eight one cubed plus three is just eleven so now we've answered the question, the gradient of the tangent of the line at 1. So we found the gradient at 1. Finding the gradient is deriving it, deriving the region of function, and then at 1 meaning putting 1 in the derivative. So the gradient at 1, the derivative at 1. So the gradient of the tangent line to the point 1, 5 is 11. And you write that in your final answer. One more example, find the equation of the tangent to the curve f of x equals x squared plus 6x minus 8 at the point where the gradient has a value of 8. So this time we're looking for the equation 
of the gradient at when the gradient is 8. So what does that mean? So we need to find x first and then we can find the equation. So here we have the gradient when it's equal to 8. So we find a gradient equation. So write that down and then find f dash x is x squared becomes 2x plus 6 and then that minus 8 disappears. So we have the gradient now, the gradient. And we need to let it equal to 8. So now 8 equals all of that. What can you do? You can find x from this. So um, 8 minus 6 is 2 equals 2x. So x is equal to 1. Have we answered the question? Let's have a look. Find the equation of the tangent to the curve at when the gradient is 8. So we haven't got an equation, we have an x value. And how do we find the equation if we have an x value? We need to find the y value and the gradient. Well, we know the gradient is 8, so now we have to find a y value. The important question is, where do you plug in x to find a y value? Do you plug it in the gradient function or the original function? In the gradient function, it will give you the gradient. In the original function, it will give you the y. So to find the y, we chuck it in the original um, uh, equation. So let's find the point. Let's find y. So f of 1, so the original equation right here, will be 1 plus 6 minus 8, which is minus 1. So we have a point, 1 and minus 1, and we have the gradient. So with the point and the gradient, we can use our y minus y1 equals mx minus x1. So plug it in there, so the minus 1 and the 1 and the 8 and we can rearrange to find our linear equation. So we have found the equation now. I think we're looking for equation. This is quite a tedious and complex question. My tip to you is underline the keywords and then write out what you're looking for. See, I've written it nice and bold. Equation where f dash x equals zero. So I know how to find f dash x and I know it sorry, equals eight. I know how to make it equal to h and then because I've written equation or I've circled it, I know that that is not my final answer. A lot of students will stop over here because it looks like a lot of work already. So be very careful, underline what you're looking for so you can continue. You can look up and go equation, that's not an equation, so you would keep going. Okay, one last example. Example 9. For the equation f of x equals 2x cubed plus 2x squared minus 8x minus 1, find the x coordinates on the graph where the gradient equals to 2. So x coordinates when gradient equals to 2. So x coordinates where f dash x equals 2. So find f dash x first. So we have the equation. So f dash x will be 2 times 3 is 6x squared. 2 times 2 is 4x minus the 8. So let that equal to 2. So be very careful. Sometimes we're looking for when x is 2. Sometimes we're looking for when the gradient is 2. In this case, we're looking for when the gradient is 2. So the left side equals 2. Um, write that out. So bring the 2 over that side. We have so minus 2 and minus 8 is minus 10. What can we take out? We can take out a 2. And then we factorize. Now x is equal to minus 5 over 3 and 1. Did we answer the question? Yes, we did. So it's very handy to underline so you know what you're looking for. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.